Hi guys, this time I wanted to talk about uh, Fossi Audio Amplifier model ZA3. This is all the rage now. Uh, Fossi has uh, created this amplifier as a kind of answer to audiophile needs, audiophiles on a budget. And uh, many people were wondering about the quality of this amp, many people were uh, actually reviewing this amp. I got one because I was very interested uh, in comparing this to my AIMA A07 Max. Uh, that was one reason. And the second reason was that this one has uh, XLR inputs. And I'm a big uh, XLR fan. Uh, all of my digital to analog converters have uh, XLR outputs and I have a lot of uh, XLR cables. Why? Because XLR gives you better dynamics and uh, XLR gives you uh, better airiness, openness in the sound. Uh, so it's always better, if you have the choice, it's always better to go balanced over single ended. So, I got this uh, a couple of weeks now. Uh, it has solid uh, 150 hours uh, burning time. Uh, I've uh, listened uh, thoroughly and we will see what's inside. Uh, now, the first thing, I will switch it off and we'll take a look uh, on the outside of the device. Let's unplug the power. Okay, front of the device, we have volume control, we have switch for choosing input type, and we have selector for mono or stereo mode because this one can also work as a mono block amplifier, uh, the same way as uh, IEMA A07 Max can work too. Uh, on the side of the device uh, we have uh, holes with something that looks uh, like a radiator uh, but it's not a radiator, I'd say it's here just for uh, aesthetic purposes and I really like that. I like the shape of the case, I like this golden uh, circles and uh, now moving to the back of the device we have XLR inputs, uh, we have RCA single ended inputs, we have subwoofer output which is a very nice thing to have in that kind of amplifier because mostly you'll be using this with some kind of bookshelf speakers and you'd like to augment your bookshelf speakers with some nice subwoofer. And we have speaker outputs. As you can see speaker outputs are as usual on that kind of small amplifiers using small output binding posts. Uh, so um, you won't be able to use uh, big uh, bananas or big spades here. Uh, but for PFE bananas it will be completely fine. Then we have uh, input uh, for the power source. The power source has to be between 24 and 48 uh, volts. Uh, the bigger voltage the better, the bigger amperage of the uh, power source the better. And we have something that's not very common on this type of the devices, uh, 12 volt trigger in. Uh, basically this is an input for triggering and powering on and off device using 12 volts signal. Uh, which is a common standard used in um, audio video receivers and some other equipment. The idea is that you're connecting uh, amplifiers like that, like uh, power amplifiers, and when you switch on your digital to analog converter or your half hour, then uh, the signal uh, from your input device like uh, DAC will trigger powering on the rest of the devices. So, quite a nice set of uh, features here. Uh, ah, one more thing. You may wonder why we are missing screws here here and there. Uh, that's because we'll be looking uh, inside uh, into the device and I will have removed some of them. <coughs> so, the back of the device, uh, sorry, the underneath of the device, uh, we have a bending on the casing. Uh, it looks nice and I think it has um, a bit uh, bigger purpose because uh, this place is used to screw on the internal metal block of radiator uh, from the TPA-5255 uh, chip amplifier. 
This is a class D amplifier, which means that it's a very effective device. Uh, it doesn't heat up uh, very much. It actually uh, is barely warm with my usage uh, because I'm not listening very loud. Uh, I prefer quality over volume, so it's not uh, getting warm at all. Just barely warm to the touch. So now uh, about the switches. As I've already said, the first one changes the input type from single-ended to balanced. That's easy thing. The second switch is more interesting because this amplifier can work, as I said, uh, in monoblock mode. Uh, when in mono, uh, we'll be using only one input and we'll be connecting the speaker left or right speaker only to this binding posts. Now, the thing about going mono here the thing that I was wondering and wanted to compare this to my AIMA was the fact that uh, in uh, AIMA, when it's working in mono mode, the volume pot is still active. And I was hoping that since this one doubles as a power on power of switch, uh, it'll be a different thing here. That when I switch that to mono mode, uh, it'll be working with maximum output volume and it'll be bus bypassing the spot. Uh, why? The thing is that if you're working with monoblocks, you usually <laughs> have to have at least two of them. And uh, if you'd be able to bypass a uh, volume pot, then you'd have some kind of uh, warranty that the uh, two amplifiers will be working with the same uh, amplification. We have the same uh, output volume. And then you'll be probably uh, regulate uh, volume using pre-amplifier pre or some kind of digital to analog converter with volume control built in. But it's not the case. The same as for AIMA A07 Max, the volume pot stays active when you switch that to mono mode. So on one hand, you may feel happy that you are able to uh, adjust the balance of your left, left and right channel. But on the other hand, uh, you should move it to the maximum uh, position because otherwise you have uh, no insurance that uh, both of the channels will be playing with the same volume and uh, still having this in this topmost position uh, for me it's not 100 percent uh, sure that the volume will be exactly the same that the volumes uh, of both channels will match because there may be some slight differences in the production line some small differences in the particular pieces of volume pot inside. So now, <clears throat> before we'll move to the sound quality, um, so before we will move to uh, looking what's inside, uh, let's talk about the sound quality and the differences between inputs. Uh, well, this has a typical class D sound, but uh, in a good meaning uh, of these words. So it's uh, analytic, it's precise, it's detailed, it's airy and open uh, with fast uh, and agile bass. Um, it's not warm, uh, it's not organic, uh, but it is uh, very neutral. Uh, now, I highly, highly, and once again, highly recommend using XLR inputs because in balanced mode, this amplifier gets instant level up compared to single ended inputs. Uh, the dynamics goes up, the openness of the sound, the precision of the location of the sounds of the instruments on the sound stage uh, gets better. So if you only can, if your DAC, uh, if your DAC uh, supports uh, balanced outputs, use these. Do not use these. It goes, it plays okay with single ended. It plays I'd say on the same level as AIMA A07 Max when using single ended inputs. Uh, so that's for comparisons. When you're using balanced, uh, sorry, when you're using single ended, they are about the same. There are no big differences except for the price. This one is almost two and a half times more expensive than AIMA A07 Max. So for the price of one of these, you can have two AIMAs which means that uh, if you won't be using uh, balanced inputs, 
for the same amount of money, you can have two amplifiers with singleted uh, inputs and you can use them as monoblocks. Uh, while in this case, if you would be going uh, for XLRs and you would be going for two monoblocks, you would need to have two of these amplifiers and that would set you back twice as much uh, money. Uh, speaking about the money, the price, the price of the device. <clears throat> it goes for about uh, $130, $140 without uh, power supply. Uh, I bought it without power supply because I'm using my linear power supply, which you can here, see here. Yeah. But if you'd like to buy this uh, complete with power supply included, this would set you back something like $160, $170. So that's it. So the sound quality, very good, very precise, very detailed and very open sound quality especially with uh, XLR inputs and only with these uh, this is superior to AIMA A07 Max. When going single-ended they are about the same. The differences are minuscule. Now let's take a look inside the device. In order to open the device uh, you need to unscrew uh, a couple of things. The first set is two screws that are underneath and these sets... oh. No, I didn't scratch that. And these two screws are holding the radiator block in place, so you need to remove that. Oopsie! And I'm back, I needed to get that runner back to safety before my cat shows up upstairs. Okay, so the second thing you need to remove are the Philips screws, the screws that are holding the ports. Uh, and the back plate here. And the last is a set of Imbus hex screws on the back. Let's remove that one. And let's remove that one. Yeah. I should have some background music, like elevator music for stuff like that. Okay, now here's the thing. Usually, most of the Chinese amplifiers can be opened by taking out the volume pots and treble bus controls and removing some additional hex nuts. But not in this case. In this case, the volume pot doubles as a power on switch and I'm not brave enough to just pull it off with all of my strength. So what I found is we can remove this one. Yeah, It will be hanging on the cables for the speaker bindings. right? And now what we can do is we can slide to the front the internals like that. Okay? Can you see it? It moved. And in order to slide it more, we have to place the back plate the way it will fit inside. Just give me a second. It uh, it requires a bit of fiddling to do that. Okay, so we have to turn the back plate like that. And then it fits inside, and then you can slowly slide everything from the front. Now you have to watch on the underneath of the device because the radiator block is using uh, thermal conducting paste. So don't touch that because you'll get dirty. But there's no danger. And now the insides of the device. I think we can look so far because we won't be able to remove everything but we can see can you see yes you can see some nice capacitors inside electrolytic capacitors for both channels as far as i can tell these are elnas so that's a good choice and towards the start of the show is the set of operational amplifiers that you can replace on your own and these operational amplifiers are very nicely described here so you precisely know what you're changing and why uh, okay so we have two amplifiers two operational amplifiers used for uh, subwoofer output and we have two operational amplifiers both double channel and these ones are also double channel uh, for left channel and for for right channel so in order to get the best of this amplifier, 
uh, it's a good idea to replace at least those two. Uh, usually you won't need the uh, high quality operational amplifiers for the subwoofer output unless you want to use sub output uh, to chain this with some kind of uh, another amplifier or headphone amplifier or something like that. In that case, uh, you could change these op amps as well. But <clears throat> for the left and the right channels, it's good to replace these two. As you can probably see, let's try to get it in focus, both of them are uh, described on the PCB world. Okay, <clears throat> the stock amplifier comes with uh, NE5532 operational amplifiers which basically is a standard for an uh, uh, Chinese uh, amplifier. Uh, they are okay, and that's all I can tell about them. Maybe another good thing is that they work. Uh, basically almost everything will be better than them. Uh, my favorite personal choice here are uh, OPA828 uh, op-amps. These are Burr Brown Texas Instruments uh, chips. Uh, that are very precise, very detailed, and very fast. Uh, the set of two of them will set you back something like uh, $15, maybe a bit more. So it's a small amount of money compared to the price of the amplifier. Uh, I don't know, it's like two burgers or something like that. So if you can source them, buy them, and replace it, replace them. Uh, these two, as I said, if you'll be using uh, um, sub output uh, for uh, connecting your subwoofer, or you won't be using this output at all, there's no need to change them, just leave NA55 free tools inside. Okay, and that's it. As you can see, the PCB board is uh, clean. There are no solder anywhere. Well, there are no uh, deep the places, nothing like that. So it's a uh, clean and tidy PC board. And it's not very uh, con congested. I mean, there is a lot of space between um, uh, between electronic uh, parts inside. So that's it about the insides. Now, the summary. Let's close that one. Okay. The summary. <clears throat> so, Let's get it this side to the front because the summer will be important because of two things. The first thing important for the summer is the price. As I said, you can get two IEMAS A07 Max for the price of one for C Audio uh, ZA3. So, if you're really tight on a budget, go for IEMAS, especially if you want to be using uh, XLRs. Uh, if your um, sound source only uses LCAs, then the best choice would be to get to IEMAS. Uh, but the situation changes if you are able to provide a balanced XLR signal for that amplifier, because then it shows uh, its uh, quality. And this is really, really good amplifier with good sound quality. Of course, it's not on par with other amplifiers uh, the big ones, yeah, the Trans Audio, which is Dartzil uh, D5 Pro clone, uh, or, or other big ones. But uh, for the desktop amplifier, for the desktop amplifier up to uh, I don't know $200, something like that. Uh, as long as you can provide XLRs, I think this is great. Maybe the best choice. If you won't be able to get a signal in balanced uh, format go for IEMAS. You'll have two of them for the same price, so you'll be able for the same amount of money, go with two um, balanced monoblocks. Balanced because there will be two paths for the left and right channel, but still you'll be using single-ended. So I think, I think that's all. For the price, that's a very good device. Uh, as for the sound quality, I think at the moment this, is, this may be uh, one of the best choices for cheap uh, desktop amplifier, as long as you're using XLFs. That's it. I, ho I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I recommend using this amp with linear power supply, 
yes, it's a bit uh, lower in the output power than the power leaks that you can get with uh, amplifier, but uh, it gives very clean and stable uh, voltage uh, for powering the amplifier. And this means very clean, uh, detailed sound with a very nice black background. <clears throat> I think that's all. I hope you enjoyed the video. If I forgot to ask about uh, something, just ask me in the comments uh, and I try to answer uh, everything I can. So that's all. Have a nice day and see you in one of my next videos.